board will now reconvene in open session. The time is 6.55. We do thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule, schedule and being patient with us as we spent time in our closed session. At this time, we would respectfully ask that you turn the sound off of your cell phones as we ask our board members to do the same. May I remind anyone wishing to address the board that they must have completed a public comment card before the start of the public portion of tonight's meeting. Let me get that. Indicating the agenda item that that topic that they would like to speak about. As your board of trustees, we are here to set goals for the district, listen to reports presented by the superintendent and his designees, approve and review the budget, approve certain personnel appointments and contracts, and make policy for the district. Management is the responsibility of the superintendent, and it is the board's responsibility to govern the affairs of the district and ensure that the district is moving forward in meeting the vision and goals that are set on an annual basis. Meeting times for the board's board meetings are posted on the AISD website at www.abilenisd.org, and the public is invited to attend. At this time, I would like to ask Dr. Jordan Zemer, Director of Communications, to lead the invocation and pledges. Welcome. Good evening. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here tonight and giving us an opportunity to do what's right for our students and staff, parents and community members. We just ask that you'd bless all of us with the wisdom and discernment to make the right decisions, to have the courage to do, again, what's best for our students and their families for our community and staff and everyone in Abilene ISD. Bless these proceedings and be with us. Thank you very much. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you'll stand for the pledges. First, the American Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now the Texas Pledge. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Be seated. Thank you, Dr. Zemer. We will now move to item C, board superintendent announcements. Dr. Q, do you have any announcements for us I've tonight? I've got a few. Yeah, I want to let you guys know. Uh, I think I've mentioned this, but I want to make sure everybody has heard it. Uh, touring Tuesdays uh, next school year is going to be a little bit different. Uh, we won't be doing touring Tuesdays officially like that. We'll be visiting campuses with board members uh, upon principal invitation as they have uh, things that they, they want to kind of show off. Uh, also want to talk about a policy consideration that you guys can be looking forward to. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be talking in the future about increasing incentives for dual credit course enrollment and completion uh, because of the benefits that uh, provide students and also to the ISD. Uh, also we'll be talking to you guys in the future about uh, an associate's degree program offered through our high schools, um, augmenting again some of the dual credit options that we have. Uh, also we'll be uh, talking to you guys later about a one-to-one -one device program. Uh, we're having that uh, kind of at the discussion level right now internally and we'll be reporting back to you on that uh, soon. Um, uh, also wanted to let you know we're having our administrator retreat July 22nd through July the 24th. I'm excited because we're administrating an assessment called the IOPT to district leaders, uh, to a, a whole bunch of district leaders. And that is an information processing preferences assessment, uh, similar to what you may have seen before uh, be uh, called a, a personality profile, but this is really more of a communication preferences profile and it's very good for uh, learning to work with uh, other people who have different communication preferences. So I'm extremely excited about that and it's actually something I'd like to do with the board at some point in the future. It's a, it's a really neat assessment. Um, and then also wanted to let you know, uh, just a reminder for some of you, we have new board member orientation uh, on June, I mean July the 11th at noon with uh, Mike Leeser. Uh, you will be provided lunch, uh, so come hungry. And then we'll also have another second round of new board member orientation led by me on uh, July the 22nd at 4 p.m. Um, then also quick reminder on behalf of Robin Jones, TASA TASBY dates. That uh, TASA TASB is going to take place in San Antonio, um, September the 27th through the 29th. If you are attending, please let Robin know ASAP um, because it's hard to get room. She has to act really fast. 
Registration opens on July the 22nd at 9 a.m. and the rooms fill up very quickly. So please, if you're going to task the TAS, we let Robin know just as soon as you possibly can. Uh, one last thing, upcoming board meetings. We have a special meeting on uh, July the 16th at 11.30 in the morning. Uh, we have a workshop on August the 1st. Our next regular meeting is August 5th. And then August 26th, we'll have a meeting to adopt the final budget and set the tax rate. That's all I have. Quite a bit. Liz is a fast talker. So thank you so much. A lot is going on in the summer. You can tell that even though there's no students walking the campus grounds, they, we are very busy here at the Ad Building. All right. Anybody else have announcements that you would like to share? Okay. I'm going to make a little adjustment here. Uh, item five is on the printed agenda is oral communication from the public. Oh, wait. Wait. I think you got it. I it. Have yeah, it changed. One. Yep. Got it. Never mind. We're okay. Item five recognitions. We're all good now. We have, I would like to welcome Dr. I mean, Mr. Jim Garfield, Executive Director for Athletics. I'll take that, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Honorary in my, in my field. Thank you, Ms. Wiley, Dr. Kuhn, Board. Um, it's, this, is, this is a special time. You get to see what our students are doing from an athletic standpoint and the, the hard work that you guys do that benefits us. So. Once a, th a thank you to you all. We're going to recognize two groups and, a, and an athlete here. So I'm going to ask the <coughs> gymnastics team to come up with uh, with Coach uh, Cook. I don't if if you haven't been to a gymnastics meet, you need to go. It's one of the funnest things I've ever seen and witnessed. And these kids, the 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 cool thing about it is is that they'll compete against each other, but then they're going to cheer for each other when they get up. And it's an awesome experience to, to watch. So, I uh, cook floor's yours, man. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you all very much for giving us the opportunity to be able to come up and showcase these kiddos. Uh, these are some awesome kiddos that we have here. Um, so, we have Corbin Jackson. He's a junior. Evan Banks, senior. And Tristan Reyna, he's a senior. And we're missing one that was a state qualifier. That's uh, Aaron Groh. He's not, he's not here today. But I was going to tell you, their places and I had to write them down because they did so well at the state meet. Um, so Tristan on floor placed ninth, Palmer Horse he placed sixth and he tied with Corbin. Uh, vault, he is the state champion on vault. Uh, yeah. Yeah, amazing. And parallel bars, he's fourth, high bar sixth and he was third in the state and all around wow. so um both tristan and corbin placed and aaron also placed on uh vault seventh place but they had an awesome year um and the three seniors uh all three of them qualified for the national championships and we went to california and competed there and they did great so but they did awesome uh and thank you for the so opportunity much. to so recognize exciting. them Way to represent yes. AIC guys. Good job. Okay. Oh, it's like y'all have done this before. <laughs> Perfect. Ready? One, two, three. Thank you. Hey guys, can I Good job, hands? guys. Well, that's very exciting. It's just really fun to watch. Really you guys. Good job. 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 Nice job, Coach. Thanks, sir. Okay, the next group we're going to recognize is our 4x1 uh, relay team from Abilene High. Coach Foreman, you want to bring them up? Um, I don't know if you follow track much, but to we've got the four by one of course we got our long jumper here man if you make it to the state you are a special athlete in UIL track so coach Gorman come on up yes sir Miss Wiley Dr. Cohen board thank you all for for having us here again my name is Justin Gorman I'm the head track coach at Abilene High I'd like to introduce you to our our four by 100 relay team uh, 
This is Bryson Perez and Jaden Jackson, Braden Henry and Rylan Bradford. Uh, these guys, man, uh, one, one of the most fun things about working with them is I think every one of them will tell you they're the fastest one on the team. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And, and, and really, they're all very special at, uh, you know, different parts of the relay, and that's why we put them where we do within the relay. But I think it's also important to, uh, to say each of these guys are multi-sport athletes, and, and, and I think that's a, a very big deal. I think Coach, Coach Fullen and Coach Gar would agree. Uh, and even within our track team, they, uh, they all participate in four to five events at, at each track meet that we go to. Um, they, uh, these guys were district champions um, and uh, runners up at the regional track meet, and then uh, which qualified us for the state track meet. Um, extremely proud of them. So. Thank you guys for coming here tonight. It's really great to see you. Very, what a place to be on a Monday night, right? You play Monday night? Yeah. Yeah. Good job, Coach. Congratulations. If you guys want to take a couple steps this way, perfect. Okay, and I can see Mr. Lizzie to make us one. Dr. Lee, there we go. There we go. Okay. All right. Dr. Tidmore, would you mind step? Thank you very much. I'm going to make sure we get everybody's faces. Ready? One, two, three. Thank you. Yeah, we'll just leave it under there and pull it out. I know. Hey, there's not a senior in that group, by the way, so oh, yes. hopefully we're back up again. All right, the last but not least, Coach Johnson, Jazz, come on up. Um, I don't know, I've been here two years, and I've watched this young lady compete um, in volleyball, softball, track, and the, she played basketball this year, and me and Coach Cox – we sat and talked about it one day at a basketball game, and he said she's going to get to the state track meet. And look, to stand up on the podium and get a silver medal in this deal, that's an awesome thing, kid. Anyway, Coach Johnson, come on up. Thank you, Ms. Wiley, Dr. Kuhn, school board. Um, I am Coach Kevin Johnson, and it has been a – Honor. It's been a pleasure um, to work with Jaslyn. Um, she is a senior. She just recently graduated. She is going to continue her talents over at the University of Texas in San Antonio. So go Roadrunners. But um, what Jazz has done for our program, for Cooper, it has just been amazing. Like um, Coach Gar said, I mean, she is a multi-sport athlete, volleyball, basketball, softball, track um, when I met her three years ago and this girl was just willing to just hop in wherever I needed her relays um, we, we, we fought on the hurdles but I mean <laughs> <laughs> everywhere else she was just a shining star and um, it just it uplifted the team it brought so much um, value and recognition to um, a program that definitely needed it and just having her um, this past senior year, I think every single meet, if I'm correct, you medaled. Every single meet she medaled, and then she was district champion, area champion, regional champion, and then to go into the state on a wet and cold day and still come out second place, I mean, that is just, uh, there's not enough words to say how just blessed we are to have her and look forward to what she is going to do. So, once again, thank you all.
thank you so much, kids, for coming and coaches. Middle of summer to be with us tonight. Thank you. We're now going to move on to item six. That's uh, oral communication from the public. The board encourages comments about the district from members of the public. Anyone wishing to address the board must have completed a public comment card before the start of the public portion of tonight's meeting, indicating the agenda item or the topic about which they wish to speak. We don't have any public comment tonight, so we're just going to move right on to item seven, consent agenda. The AISD Board of Trustees meetings are preceded by an in-depth workshop meeting. Board workshops are held prior to regular meetings, and the purpose of the workshop meeting of the board is to discuss items in preparation for potential consideration at future board meetings. Meeting times for board meetings are posted on the AISD website at www.abilineisd.org, and the public is invited to attend our workshops. Does a board member wish to remove a, an item for a discussion from the consent agenda? Do I have a motion regarding the items on the consent agenda tonight? I move to approve the consent agenda as presented. We have a motion by Bill Enriquez. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Rodney Goodman. We will now take a roll call vote. Danny Wheat? Yes. Bill Enriquez? Yes. Taylor Tidmore? Yes. Cindy Earls, absent. Angie Wiley, yes. Rodney Goodman? Yes. Blair Schrader? Yes. The motion passes six to zero. Okay, let's go. We will now move on to item eight. Public hearing on Every Student Succeeds Act application. The public, when we get up, it's going to be by Kimberly. Mm -hmm. Come right on up if you would like, Kimberly. The public hearing is now open, and the time is 7-12. Ms. Kimberly Bromley, please give us your brief summary on the ESSA application. Yes, ma'am. Happy to do that for you this evening. Um, first, we'll give you a little background on what the ESSA uh, law is, the Every Student Succeeds Act. Here's a bit of a timeline. You may hear some of these words and think, oh, I, that sounds familiar to me. In 1965, the U.S. Senate passed and Congress passed uh, the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. In 2001, that was replaced by the No Child Left Behind Act. A lot of us remember that. Nickleby was very common. And in 2015, the reauthorization of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act again happened. And at the 2015 mark, it was renamed the Every Student Succeeds Act. So they're really all the same law. Um, and whenever it's reauthorized by Congress, sometimes they'll change the name and they'll change some of the parameters within, but these are really all laws that were designed to help close achievement gaps between students who are from backgrounds of economic hardship to, uh, compared to those that are from middle class or better backgrounds. So this is our nation's main education law for all public schools and it holds, accountable, it holds schools accountable for how, how well students are learning. The purpose of the law um, gives considerable input by the states into how schools will account for the work they do with the grants that are involved in the ESSA program. But for the most part, we are focused on the educational achievement of four specific subgroups, students living in poverty, minorities, students with disabilities, and those who are emerging bilinguals. We do uh, require that we have input from stakeholders in the business and parent and uh, general community as we make decisions about how we will expend these funds and what programs we'll design with the benefit of these funds. So the, the public hearing tonight is part of that uh, opportunity to seek public input, yours and anyone that's in the audience that wishes to comment. The scope of the ESSA law um, covers seven broad areas, including academic standards, um, annual testing results, school accountability ratings, goals for academic achievement, um, plans for supporting and improving schools that struggle, 
Um, the state and local report cards, now this isn't the kind of report card that your kid brings home at the end of a six weeks. This is the report card that rates our district or rates a campus um, as it is effective. Our state gives out those ratings um, and the federal government also gives out a rating and we are required to share that federal government rating of our district and our campuses with the general public annually. And then parent engagement in all aspects. So every I think every single one of the laws involved in ESSA, every one of the, the titles there are the sections of that law, um, involves some sort of parent input or parent engagement as one of the requirements. Here's where uh, it gets down to nuts and bolts for us. So here is a, an overview of the last three years of funding that Abilene ISD has received through the ESSA grants. So you'll see on the left, Title I, uh, Part A, and Part C, and D, Title II, Title III, and Title IV. Those are the parts of the law. In the middle, it's telling you really what that's for. So Title I, Part A is improving basic programs. These are our campuses that are designated Title I schools. Um, they all have at least 45% uh, of the students that are uh, eligible for free and reduced lunch. In Abilene ISD, we have applied about a 60% threshold. So um, as our campuses cross that 60% threshold of free and reduced lunch el eligible students, we've included them as a Title I school-wide program. And for the coming year, that's gonna be all of our elementary schools and all of our middle schools um, and long. And then um, Title I Part C serves migrant students. Uh, you'll see that amount is very small compared to the others because we have for the last two years only had one migrant student in the district. Um, for this year's application, 24-25, we've actually not chosen to accept that money directly to the district because the, the burden of paperwork almost makes it not, it doesn't give as much benefit to the student. So um, those funds will be administered by our region service center in direct student service to, um, to any migrant student who's in the district in the coming year. And then you'll see Part D for our neglected and delinquent youth that serves students at Hendrick Home for Children and uh, the Taylor County Juvenile Justice Center uh, where we have students who uh, attend classes when they're no longer able to attend classes in Abilene ISD or uh, any campus or even DAEP because of behavior infractions. And then um, Title II is our big professional development uh, federal grant. Title III serves our emergent bilinguals, and Title IV um, has a really interesting name, Student Support and Academic Enrichment. It, it serves three purposes. One is to provide a well-rounded education. Um, so it allows us to serve many programs, not specifically for students who are um, on free and reduced lunch or at a particular campus. This is a grant that benefits all of our campuses um, and is focused on STEM and CTE and um, it, it just an enriched experience. One of the things that we fund out of Title IV is our summer camps at the Lift, for example. So we are showcasing CTE programs as early as possible to our, our youngest students. They're getting super excited about those. Um, in total, for our planning amount for 2024, 2025, you'll see that total is a little over $6.8 million. Um, planning is in red because we will get a final allocation in October or so. Um, last year, that final allocation increased the amount about $200,000 across all of the funds. You'll also see that the planning amount for Title I, that's one that people eyes hone in on really quickly because that is a, a big part of what we're able to uh, do in Abilene ISD is use our Title I funds to enrich the experience at our Title I campuses. You'll look at that and you'll say, well, that's less than last year, but realize that's this year's planning versus last year's final. And this year's planning amount is actually 101% of last year's planning amount. So if I compared apples to apples, planning to planning, this is actually a little more than our planning amount was last year. And it's 95% of last year's final. So I expect that our final amount will probably be very close to what last year's was, if not a little bit more than what it was last year. Our plan, and this is a big part of our um, public presentation, is what are we gonna do with these Title I dollars? You saw this slide earlier tonight in workshop. These are our four district goals, our 14 performance objectives, and the work of the federal grants through ESSO will support 
and align to all of these goals. We talked earlier about how each individual campus has adopted a number of these performance objectives for their own plan, and that plan is what drives their use of federal dollars when they're allocated to their campus. So you'll see all of this work reflected in their Title I programs on campus. The, the biggest expenses planned by campuses in the district are here on this slide. Um, the lion's share of that grant funding goes to supplementary staff costs. That includes um, intervention staff, parent family engagement liaisons, instructional paraprofessionals, and tutors. And I, I skipped the first one on purpose because I wanted to spend a little time talking to you about we're really excited about this shift, um, working with our HR department to brainstorm um, and finance actually, because um, one of our big parts of training for principals this year with Ms. Hines is to really consider the return on investment when we decide whether or not to continue to spend money on something. And for years, our campuses have spent a whole lot of money on interventions, trying to catch up what students lacked when they came in or what they miss in instruction because maybe they're moving from one campus to another or they enrolled late, those kinds of things. So we've been trying to fill a bucket from the bottom up. Um, and this year we've had several campuses step out and try something new. They said, you know what, we want to really invest in the quality of our tier one instruction, the base level instruction, and make it as excellent as possible. So rather than trying to catch kids up after that tier one instruction hasn't met their needs, they're investing instead in instructional coaching, job embedded, professional learning, instead of as much intervention. So we're gonna be watching that very closely over the coming year to see if our student performance accelerates because the quality of their first level of instruction is more excellent than it has been in the past. So we're, we're excited to watch that happen. Um, then we have some supplementary materials, technology, um, services for English learners, um, any services that provide a well-rounded education, including support for RCTE and AP programs. Dual credit falls into that as well. You heard Dr. Kuhn mentioning that earlier. And um, some robust opportunities for family engagement. That's one of my personal pet projects for the coming year, is to really step up our community and family engagement, both um, at the district level and at the individual campus level. This is the time for you to have input questions and for anyone in the audience to contribute as well. Exactly. If you have public uh, time for the public to express and the board as well at the same time. I did go back to a statement you said all of our elementaries are Title I. Yes, ma'am. So um, based upon percentage the of percentage. students eligible for free and reduced lunch. What is that cutoff? Uh, the cutoff in the law is that they have to, they have to, even to do targeted assistance, they have to have at least 35% of the students eligible. And at that point, you could only serve the students who are eligible. That's very challenging to do in a school setting. Like, we bought this computer with Title I dollars, but you can't touch it because you're not on free and reduced lunch. So it, it's generally um, not the way that districts will go. They'll, they'll wait until a more significant percentage of the population is eligible for free and reduced lunch, and then they'll make it a school-wide program. Under law, that happens at 45%. So when 45% of the campus is eligible for free and reduced lunch, you can serve everyone on the campus. Are we school-wide at every campus? We are school-wide at every campus in pre-K through eight now okay. for the coming year. Um, the two campuses with the lowest percentage of um, students eligible are the two that are joining in in the coming year, which are Ward and Austin. They were the last two elementaries that were not yet Title I. Um, Ward and Austin have both been flirting with the 60% cutoff that had been our in-district standard. Mm -hmm. And the only reason, well, I, I can't say only, I can speak to the reasons that I know of from um, working with Cheryl Cunningham, working with Dr. Munoz, is that you have a finite amount of dollars, and the more campuses you bring on, the more thinly those dollars are spread. So you want them to go where there is the greatest need. Um, we just have, the threshold in the district has historically been right at that 60% threshold. And this year, Ward crossed over it, and um, Austin was just bumping like 59 and a half, like right on the edge. And uh, one of the things we have noticed that it becomes very complicated when you want to do something, and if you can't do it for everyone with supplemental dollars, but you want to do it for everyone, then you have to go to the general fund budget to do it for everyone. You can't do it for the Title I schools with Title I money and do it for the one non-Title I with local money. That's called supplanting and it's against the law. 
So um, supplemental services have to be what's above and beyond what the district provides in its basic program. And for that reason, we feel like at this point, um, every school, um, Austin within tenths of a point, had crossed that 60% threshold. And that it does that is a local determination. Um, and we decided at this point it is in the best interest of all campuses to acknowledge the shift in demographics to get the services students need at the schools they attend and go ahead and, and get that going across the board. Okay. Thank you for that. You bet. Thank you for that thorough presentation. Yes. I try to give enough information and not too many words. <laughs> So um, always I'm happy to answer questions about what we're, what we're doing with these dollars. Our principals are becoming masters of managing, uh, managing budgets, being creative and being accountable for the resources that are provided to them. Um, and it's been exciting over the last 12 months to really work hand in hand with them to um, administer their budgets in a way that is producing results for their kids. So it's exciting times. I have one just comment. I'm yes, excited sir. to see what you do with family and mm -hmm. community engagement this year because I think that's so important. I think the more we get people in our schools and know our schools, the more those people love our schools. I mean, that's why Absolutely. I'm here because I've been in the, the sure. schools for 15 years and mm -hmm. we've fallen in love with AISD. And so I, th yeah. I think if you, that's could be such a positive for the district to get more and more people engaged yeah. and know what's actually going on in our schools. I think it's going to be, um, there's, two perspectives to that. One is having them engaged and knowing what's going on in our schools and being champions for our school district, which we definitely want because we're champions for their kids, you know, and so we want them, champ you know, being champions for our system. The other part is to empower those families to be effective advocates and supporters of their children so that the family itself is encouraging the student's success. Um, and sometimes it's because often we will know things about how a student learns um, that we need the parents to be equal partners in supporting. And so the communication and the interaction between an effective family and an effective school system um, can be really, really powerful. So that's, that's where we're going to be looking for the sweet spot of action this year, some things we could do district-wide that maybe an individual campus couldn't afford to do, but we can sponsor at the district level using federal funds. Um, then it benefits all um, and be able to celebrate those things and build ambassadors and advocates for our system along the way. So it is exciting time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. If there are not any more public uh, comment, then we will close the public set the public hearing. The time is 7:27. At this time, we're going to move on to item number nine, reports. And our first item up is Schneider Electric, Mr. Charlie Davis. Come on up. Welcome, gentlemen. How are y'all? Very well. Good to see you tonight. I'm Charlie Davis with Schneider Electric. I've got Ryan Wonder with me. And we're here tonight, well, I always mess this up, to give a quick overview of kind of the project that Abilene ISD went into agreement with us back in December of 2021 and then give a construction update of where we are as of today. So as you can see on this slide, this is kind of our final construction update. We're pretty much at the end of the completion of our construction. We still just have a little bit of building automation control integration here at the administration building, which I believe should be finalized or will be finalized very soon. And then there's 25 doors left to be replaced beginning July 1st, which is currently in process and it's expected to be complete by the end of this month. And then we have just a few punch list items for the replacement for the glass, for the warranty issues, for the trim and finish. And Ryan, you might have some more updates on that. I think that's it. And a lot of this stuff is actually complete as of right now. So we're very close. The next slide, I just wanted to give a few of uh, the new board members kind of an update of what the project entailed. And as you can see, kind of starting from the bottom left, it was LED lighting across 12 campuses. So we originally had met with Dr. Young and the staff to determine what were some of the big pain points the district was having as far as comfort issues and what ways could we find dollars that we were currently spending within our bu budget and reinvest those dollars into some of these upgrades. So the one thing was lighting. We did that at 12 districts, interior and exterior LED lighting. We did window and door replacements at nine campuses. And uh, Ryan's going to go through some before and after pictures we have for you here towards the end. We did a building automation system, which controls the air conditioning. 
um, and then we replaced nearly 400 rooftop units. And that was all done during the summer of 2022. And I think that was complete within about a month. We had a pretty strict timeline because train was gonna increase the price by about 10% on January 1st. So we were able to get that all approved and um, ordered and delivered by the end of uh, 2021 before that increase. And then the um, installation of outside air units as well. The total project cost was $28.8 million, as you can see on the left was the investment, but the total benefit over the life term of the project is $36.6 million in guaranteed savings. So as of today, there was about a 24.6% utility reduction in your utility expenses uh, each year. As I mentioned, that was 12 schools that we had modern, modernized. Um, and from there, I'm going to let Ryan go through some pictures. And then anytime you all have questions, we'd love to answer anything. But you just want to give a brief overview of what pictures they are and what work we did? Sure. Thank you, Charlie. We've got a picture here that shows the front of the Abilene High School. And you know, we talk about the window project, and there are energy savings there. But the aesthetics is something that people forget about. You know, the inside looking out, much improved, and the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's those comfort benefits. So big change on that building and all of the nine buildings that we, uh, we did work on there with the, with the windows. Um, this is the Woodson uh, COE, and you can see, I mean, those, those windows are no doubt original to the building there on the left, probably from 1960 or something like that. Um, all this new glass is all commercial, double pane, is what we call one inch glass, quarter inch glass, half inch air gap, and then another quarter inch of glass. So a big difference between what was there prior and now. This is at the, uh, the gym on Madison uh, Middle School. Uh, the lighting, this is kind of a neat before and after picture here. We've got the, the metal halide lighting on the left and the new LEDs on the right. And that raised foot candles on the field quite a bit from about 50 foot candles up to about an average of about 85. So significantly brighter, also uh, a more of a daylight color there. So about 5,700 Kelvin. And you can see the difference in the light fixtures, the, the glare is great, greatly reduced as well. Those are pretty neat fixtures where they're really focusing light on the field, not so much just shotgunning that light all over the, the uh, countryside. Uh, this is a pretty cool before and after picture to kind of show the difference between some of the old surface mounted fluorescent lighting that's definitely yellowed and then some of these new LED uh, uh, flat panel fixtures, kind of like what we have in this room here. I forgot to mention, this, this room was the first phase that we did kind of as a pilot for the district back, I believe, in 2019, and that was this entire facility. Some more uh, window glass work here. I think this might be at Alcorta, one of the elementary schools. Uh, again, that old single pane glass and, uh, you know, those doors and a lot of those frames were, I mean, literally decades old, from the late 1950s, in, even some of it. Uh, this building here, we're looking at some of the equipment on the roof. You know, this building, the HVAC equipment was a real mess. It was kind of a hodgepodge of equipment from, some of it from the 60s as well. And so really jumped ahead, kind of three generations of HVAC technology. So radical change here in this building. I'm sure y'all don't, or some of you remember, whenever the air conditioning used to turn on, you'd hear a loud bang. Mm -hmm. Completely got rid of that. <laughs> <coughs> That's right. We've got, uh, like Charlie said, we had over 360 of these rooftop units replaced. Um, so uh, quite a bit in the way of equipment. Several of these buildings just complete, completely removal, 70 units and all 70 new units. And like Charlie said, that was a really tight timeline. This is kind of back in the big COVID crunch when normally we have eight week lead time on equipment and train said it's going to be 26 weeks. And so uh, that was a big change and we dealt with that. and. Equipment showed up. We ordered it before Christmas, like Charlie said, just to avoid that cost increase, and it took until after the 4th of July for it to show up. So we had a short time window to get that installed in the summer, and we made that happen. Um, the controls, the building automation system, that goes hand in glove with the, with the new HVAC. And so this is really what manages that, that equipment to make sure that the equipment's not running after hours and on holidays and things like that. And that's it. Happy to answer any questions. Could you go back to the, the, the diagram, the color diagram of the things that you did? Yes, ma'am. For questions, that way we can see. 
what was done. There. Yes. And would it be appropriate to, um, for our new board members and the end of your project to review how we pay for this? Sure. I think so. So the project, Charlie, you might know the details, but oh, savings you know. paid for, you're talking about Go ahead. Well, yeah, how we budgeted it, how we paid for this. So we looked at what savings brought in mm -hmm. revenue, and then from that, you also went through a third party, I believe it was government capital, to do the rest to pay the things that weren't part of savings. So most of it was covered, but then the part that wasn't, like the windows and doors, are a much longer payback. So I don't know the exact number that y'all budgeted each year to pay off that note. Right. Off the top it, of well, I mean, it, it's it's... Yeah. Well, I'm not asking for specific numbers, but I mean, it's like, it's kind of like spread out over years future, correct? So that, but it's things that we needed that's going to save us money in the present. Absolutely. That we can use the savings and it will eventually pay off in the future. Right. So we looked at utility savings, right. then there was operational and maintenance savings, and then capital cost avoidance over the 20 years right, of right. knowing we're going to have to replace these units over the next 10, 15 years. And so the bookkeeping, and I'm not interested right. in that. <laughs> we but, accounted for all right, of that. Right, right. Yes, ma'am. Sound decisions that we're saving money in the present to pay for the investments in the future. And we're that long term partner, so we'll be here. I mean, we're here all the time, but after the uh, construction is complete, then we're on the hook each year for those savings to make sure that they're actually paying what we said they're going to pay for. And if those savings fail, then Schneider Electric writes a check to make up for that difference mm -hmm. as part of the just guarantee and the risk completely on us. Good. That's a nice update at the end of your project to yes, know that. We uh, we did a, we might have made a great decision in going with you guys, and I Thank feel like you. we did. Thank you. It's been a great partnership, and we'll still. I mean, like I said, be around. Our other team will come in after the construction's done. But me and Ryan have been here since day one, and we'll continue to be the faces for the district. And as construction finishes, we'll come back and do like a celebration as well for one of you. Near months. I just want to say thank you as a new superintendent coming in, being able to see the work that you guys have done. You know, I walk around and see buildings. I don't, I don't know, you know, how long those windows were there or what Abilene I looked like a year ago. And so seeing the the vast difference that uh, your work has made in this district, really appreciative, really appreciative of this board and my predecessor and uh, the folks in the central office who were. Uh, involved in making the decision to, to do this project. I think uh, it's it's neat to see the savings, but also just the, the comfort improvements for our kids and our teachers. So right. thank you. It's the first time I've ever, uh, you know, I've heard of Schneider Electric and, and seen you guys at a million events and things yeah. like that, but uh, to see your work is very impressive and thank appreciate you. it on behalf of our school Absolutely. district. Absolutely. And yeah, and like I said, it's part of the kind of beginning of the process that was approved in December of 2021, but we started working a year and a half before to kind of come through because there were several things we looked at that just didn't make sense at the time and we crossed those off the list and made kind of more of a what makes the most financial sense to take care of some of the biggest pain points we have that'll bring in comfort improve the learning environment and that's kind of where we ended up on that was my question y'all did start in 2022 so 2021 was when the contract was approved okay. but y'all um, went into an agreement with us to kind of start that design phase in july of 2021 and then prior to that, we started in 2019 of kind of really setting the stage of like what makes the most sense for Abilene ISD. Mm -hmm. So it did take a few years to kind of get to that final point. And then construction started in the beginning of 22. So it was a, it was a lengthy process. You're going to miss us. Yes. We'll still be around. <laughs> I work with the city of Abilene, went to ACU, so I'm, I'm here all the time. <laughs> well, Great job, you guys. Thank we you. do appreciate, appreciate it. it. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Great presentation. We will now move to business items requiring board action. Item A is Education Service Center Region 14 contract for 24-25. So Abilene ISD partners with uh, Region 14 uh, Education Service Center. They are uh, valuable partners in the work that we do. They provide a lot of services uh, that are a value add for what we do. Um, the contract for this coming year is valued at $159,000. Uh, 
110,000 of that will come from our own local funds. The remainder will come from state and federal funds. We get numerous services from uh, Region 14, a few that I can name. They have a 504 program we participate in, Advanced Academic Services. Uh, they help us with bilingual ESL. Uh, they have a counselor consortium that our counselors belong to. They provide curriculum leadership. They provide a number of different uh, curriculum tools that we use, including uh, a bank of uh, practice questions tied to the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills. Um, they uh, provide what's called the Texas Student Data System, which is an interface that we use to track all sorts of student data. And um, we will basically uh, continue to utilize the same services we used last year, with the exception of one. We, we pulled out one service they were offering us that we, we looked at and realized we didn't use it very much last year. Other than that, we're continuing to use all the same services because they are very beneficial for our school district. Um, if you will approve this tonight, there will be a contract generated uh, from Region uh, 14 that I will sign on your behalf, but uh, need your vote to give me permission to sign that contract and uh, re-enter into a contract with Region 14, which we do on an annual basis. Great. Is there a motion regarding the Education Service Center Region 14 contract for 24-25? I'll make a motion to approve the Education Service Center Region 14 contract for 24-25 as presented. Do we have a second? Second. We'll now take a roll call vote. Blair Schrader? Yes. Rodney Goodman? Yes. Taylor Tidmore? Yes. Bill and Rick? <coughs> yes. Angie Wiley? Yes. Danny Wheat? Yes. The motion passes. Oh, Cindy Earl's absent. Six to zero. Thank you. We'll now move to item B, appointment of delegate and alternate for the TASV Delegate Assembly, Saturday, September 28th. Mr. Dr. Kuhn. I don't have a whole lot to say about this. I think, generally speaking, uh, you guys as a board settle on who uh, is, is willing or gets voluntold to be the uh, TASB Delegate and alternate at the TASB Delegate Assembly. So I'm just going to step back and let you guys hash that out. You're absent, you win. <laughs> That's right. So that would be Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now an alternate. I think that'd have to be Dr. Tidmore or Mr. Schrager. I, I was looking at my schedule and I'm actually traveling out of town for work. Oh, that's, yeah. that's convenient. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta speak up quicker, Taylor. I'll do it, I'll do it. Take one for the team. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it's done. Okay. Do we have a motion? I'll move. I move to approve Cindy Earls as delegate and Taylor Tidmore as alternate for the TASB Delegate Assembly Saturday, September 28th. Do we have a second? Second. Danny Wheat? Now we'll take a roll call vote. Rodney Goodman? Yes. Angie Wiley? Yes. Cindy Earls? Absent. Blair Schrader? Yes. Danny Wheat? Yes. Taylor Tidmore? Yes. Bill and Rinkus? Yes. I wondered how you were going to vote, Dr. Tidmore. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll move on to item C. AISD Employee Compensation Plan. We need to hear from our Assistant Superintendent, Allison Sims. Yes. So you will see some familiar slides that um, this time we'll attach a little bit of a recommendation. Just as a reminder, these are the, the four um, options for um, pay increases, potentially. And recommendation from Dr. Kuhn, um, a 2% pay increase, general pay increase. This would increase teacher starting pay to 51.5. Provide the TASB recommended adjustments to align with market comparisons and ease compression in our custodial, paraprofessional, and technology pay grades. Adjust administrative professional pay grade one to meet the new Fair Labor Standard Act and approve new stipends for behavior and special education teachers. Did you get a number on the stipends? I did. Dr. Walder and I sent that to you. Two hundred eighteen. No, it's the cost of the stipends that we. Yes. Dr. 
Dr. Timor, did, you get, did they answer that? Yes. They said it very quietly. Sorry. <laughs> 218,000. Yes. Really That's the cost of the stop-ins for the behavior special ed teachers? Yes. Okay. Thank you for that. It's a little bit of a, it will end up being a little less than that because we were giving, um, we were giving some uh, to, for a signing bonus and so that would be gone. So, a little bit of a, Is there a motion regarding the 24-25 ASD employee compensation plan? I move to approve a 2% general pay increase for all AISD employees, make TASB recommended adjustments, FLSA adjustments, and new stipends as presented. We have a motion by Rodney Goodman. I second. And a second by Blair Schrader. Is there any discussion further? We'll now take a roll call vote. Blair Schrader? Yes. Danny Wheat? Yes. Bill Enriquez? Yes. Angie Wiley? Yes. Cindy Earls? Absent. Rodney Goodman? Yes. Taylor Tidmore? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. We'll now move to items covered during closed session. Okay, I, let's see, we're going to skip on, right? Correct. It's not written there. So, the, uh, under, uh, Is it off here? Yeah, it's, uh, Okay, we're going to move on to, off script, there, I think, 11D. Matters pertaining to safety and security. Just a minute, give me a moment. Yeah, it's not, it's not in there. Okay, that's all I needed to know. Is there a motion regarding, what do I say? Say, what? Safety and security, safety and security as discussed in closed session. Make a motion to approve school marshals as discussed in the closed session. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? We'll now take a roll call vote. Bill Enriquez? Yes. Taylor Tidmore? Yes. Cindy Earls? Absent. Danny Wheat? Yes. Angie Wiley? Yes. Blair Schrader? Yes. Rodney Goodman? Yes. The motion passes 6-0. Sorry about that. That was Taylor Tidmore and did you? Okay, yeah. got it. Who seconded that? Danny. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. There being no further business, any more announcements? This meeting is adjourned. The time is 7.48. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate your attendance. Thank you, board.